This lecture series is in memory of GSB 87 alumni, environmentalist, and conservationist Conradin von Gugelberg, who died shortly after graduation. The von Gugelberg Memorial Fund aims to inspire and support students and alumni interested in environmental issues. As many of you probably already know, Dr. McNutt um, currently holds the position of Director of the United States Geological Survey. She's also an official science advisor uh, to the Secretary of the Interior. Please join me in a warm welcome for Marcia McNutt. Certainly, given the unprecedented nature of this calamity, its depth, its unconstrained nature, the 87 days that oil poured out um, one mile deep underneath the ocean, it really took a lot of research in order, and novel research, in order to tame that beast. All parties involved in tackling this incredible environmental disaster learned a lot about leadership and about working together, and that is my message to you tonight. Here's a, a map from the USGS from June 3rd, and this is about as bad as it got. And this shows when, hydro, when, when oil started to impact the shoreline of Louisiana, and every day we were getting uh, reports of more and more shoreline being oiled, and the nation, the government, and BP were all at their lowest. Everyone had the same goal in mind. We wanted to stop the oil at its source as quickly as possible. And sometimes there may have been some differences as to exactly what was the best and the fastest route to do that. And whenever you're addressing a problem and everyone agrees on what the goal is, there's an awful lot that can be done to come to closure. I'm going to talk a lot about the sociology, about the decision making in this oil spill. And the caveats I want to say is that I'm not a sociologist. I'm a geophysicist, OK? So I'm just talking personally from my own experiences as someone who spent four months in Houston at BP headquarters working every day on this problem. Here's a picture of me with Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar. This was uh, very early, the end of the first week of May. So by the time we got to Houston, Secretary Salazar had already decided, and, and talk about a leader in a time of crisis, he already had in his mind that he was going to take his senior leadership team from Interior and deploy each of us to a command center on the Gulf and leave us there until the crisis was over. We would get together in um, a, a group in, in um, Houston, and we would find that the BP folks tended to be the cowboy mentality. We're going to get her done. You know, Top Kill was a great example. Top Kill had been a procedure that had been the winning solution in the Gulf War when Kuwait was on fire. So, you know, you, you have the get or done mentality, and then the scientists from the government team come on in and they say, well, you know, we, we really want to know if it's the right answer. And, and the DOE engineers come in and they say, we want some process here. We want to make sure we've minimized risk. We want to make sure we've considered worst case scenarios. And that was a very different kind of culture that came in. And you can imagine that this caused problems. Here we have a typical day where we've got, um, here's Secretary Chu, here we have Thad Allen, the incident commander, uh, myself sitting here. So these, uh, these cultures often had opportunities to clash, but nevertheless, working together, in the end, we did get her done. 
I think you all um, heard many reports about uh, deep oil, plumes of deep oil. And um, this is the uh, Imbari Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, which was um, actually one of the first uh, to detect the oil in the deep sea. I was in charge of uh, the team for estimating the flow of the uh, Macondo well. BP's position on flow from the well was the government could do it if they wanted to on a not to interfere basis. But yet I would argue that knowing the flow from the well was very, very important. And it was very, very important on many fronts. First of all, dispersant was being applied um, at the wellhead. And knowing how much dispersant needed to be applied was dependent on knowing the flow rate. Number two, the coffer dam failed because they didn't know the flow rate. Top kill failed because they didn't know the flow rate of the well. I think that they might not have even tried top kill had they known the flow rate of the well. OK, I also want to talk to you about um, the well integrity. If you remember, the well integrity test was when the capping stack was put on and the well was shut in for a test to see if the well could hold pressure. This was on July 15th. And the reason we needed to do this was BP had suggested to everyone that as a result of the original explosion, there were some discs in the 16-inch liner that may have burst, and that mud flowing out of those, 16, uh, of those burst discs in the 16-inch liner was the reason why Top Kill had failed. So we needed to test that possibility, because if that was true, then the well could never be shut in from the top that we would have to wait for the relief wells to reach uh, their targets sometime in August before this nightmare would ever be over. But if BP was wrong, if the well had integrity, then we could shut it in from the top with the capping stack and end the oil spill in July, a full month ahead of the relief wells. So the bottom line here is that there were a lot of cultures at play here. There was the openness that the government needed in terms of information. There was the insistence on getting the answer right. There was the need for science. All of those were what the government pushed for that wasn't necessarily high on the BP agenda. But in the end, the BP and the government did work well together. The government science team in Houston had to assure our leaders in Washington that not only were we going to get it done, but we were going to get it right. And in the end, we ultimately did. And it was through the cooperation of all that that happened. For more talks by dynamic social innovators, please visit our podcast channel at bit.ly slash SI Conversations.